Um, you you write a lot about the Holocaust during your book. It's pe- people who love their Jews, you, you, you will. And at one point in your book, you write about your visit to an exhibition on Auschwitz at the Manhattan's Museum of Jewish Heritage. And while you praise the exhibition, you begin to wonder what it's all for. And you say that you know what the standard answers will be, that we must never forget the depths to which humanity can sink and that those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. Um, You acknowledge this, but instead you posit that the reason for these sorts of exhibitions might be something else. You write, I quote, Yes, everyone must learn about the Holocaust so as not to repeat it. But this has come to mean that anything short of the Holocaust is, well, not the Holocaust. The bar is rather high. What are you saying in this excerpt? Well, so I do think that there has been this, um, I think, and I, and I can't speak to, what's to the way this has worked out in, in, in the UK or in Europe, but um, in the United States, there was this idea in the Jewish community about 30 years ago or 30 or 40 years ago that Holocaust education was going to prevent anti-Semitism. And, you know, that's, you know, about, it was, it's about 30 years ago when you had this opening of this like massive Holocaust museum in Washington. Um, you started having, um, you know, uh, Holocaust mandatory curricula about the Holocaust in schools. Um, you started having other Holocaust memorials opening around the United States. You started having Hollywood movies about this. And there really was, and a lot of that came from the Jewish community. Um, and the idea was that, you know, people would go to these museums or learn about this in school. They'd learn where hatred can lead, you know, they'd learn what the world did to the Jews and they would then stop hating Jews, right? And like, it wasn't a ridiculous idea, but, you know, 30 years later, what's interesting is, you know, there's, you know, sort of much higher levels of anti-Semitism now, at least in the United States and probably many other places too, than there were 30 years ago. So it's sort of like, maybe we should reevaluate this. And what's come to mean is that, you know, Holocaust education, um, at least in the United States, is that's the only education people have about anti-Semitism. And so what that has come to mean is like anti-Semitism consists of murdering 6 million Jews. Mm. And, you know, there's this problem where, you know, as I say in that passage, you quoted from the book, you know, it's like the bar is kind of high at that point. I list, I'm like, here's a bunch of things that aren't the Holocaust. And I list everything from like trolling Jews on social media to expelling entire Jewish communities from entire countries and seizing all their assets, which of course happened in many, many countries in the Islamic world in the 20th century. I was sort of like, all of those things are not the Holocaust. None of them are a big deal. Mm. Right. And the interesting piece of this is that, you know, a lot of the the message in this book, um, in my book is that people tell stories about dead Jews that make them feel better about themselves. And what's interesting to me is that, you know, while I said 30 years ago, at least in the United States, this was, you know, this sort of move, you know, this push for more Holocaust education absolutely was coming from the Jewish community. Um, You know, this exhibit, um, this, or exhibition, I guess is the right word, this exhibition um, that I was visiting, that I write about in the book in New York, this was not an exhibit that was created by the Jewish community. This was an exhibit it was called Auschwitz not long ago, not far away. Yes, they made a Star Wars reference in the name of their Holocaust show. I, I'm just going to let that sit there. Um, that show was created. It wasn't created by the Jewish community. It was created by a for-profit European company whose business is blockbuster museum shows. One of their most famous exhibits, the same company, was an exhibit about 10 or 15 years ago called Human Bodies. I don't know if they, I'm sure they had this in England. It was like, it was all over the United States. It was like a traveling show. It was, I know it was in a lot of places in Europe as well. This was where they had like literally human cadavers. I read about this. Yeah. And they were like posed and like cross section. They dyed them different colors. And it was, you know, as you can imagine, quite controversial. The same company, they also have another show that's about the Titanic. Um, And, you know, as I put it in the book, I'm like, of course, this is not a disaster porn company. It's an education company. Like, who's going to argue against education? I'm kind of here to argue against education. Because, you know, when somebody is trolling you on social media, and they're like photoshopping your face into a gas chamber, the problem is not that that person doesn't know about the Holocaust. Like, it's not an education problem. And I think that there's this, there's also this thing that we do, and I don't know if this happens elsewhere in the, in other countries, but we have this ritual now in the United States where whenever some public person, like some public figure says something vaguely anti-Semitic, they get dragged to the Holocaust Museum 
And then they, like, have to make this statement that, like, you know, Nazis are bad. Mm. I mean, the problem is, like, it's, it's, you know, like, it's not really that hard to say that Nazis are bad. I mean, it's apparently harder than it should be. But, like, that's, like, you know, that's not a hard bar to clear, you know, to be like, yeah. oh, Nazis yeah. are bad, right? I mean, and also think about what, that's cost-free, right? Like, you don't have to engage with actual living Jews, right? And so that's another piece of this story. People love dead Jews, um, you know, and when I say that, you know, people tell stories about dead Jews that make them feel better about themselves. One of those stories is, is, is Holocaust education, because, you know, you know, if you go to a museum to learn about the Holocaust, like, hopefully you feel sad about what happened. But you feel great about yourself because you're like, like, wow, I would never do this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like yeah, okay you probably wouldn't but like you know, that's, that's really, why you attract that's really not a hard standard to meet yeah. right and then what it's come to mean is that like you know then it's like you know when somebody like shoots up a synagogue they're like oh only three people died like you know that it's not the holocaust mm. right like or like you know in, in the texas hostage situation it's like nobody died except the perpetrator like we're great you know it's amazing yeah. so i mean yeah this is kind of a bit of a, a, a problem with the standard